So Arch Linux as a server. I bet you might be thinking that that's an absolutely insane idea. Why the heck would anyone want to do that? Arch Linux is a rolling distribution, and because it's rolling, it has complexity and change, which are basically two things that the average server administrator, it basically keeps them up at night. Complexity and change, probably not what you want in the server. But I'm gonna make the argument that Arch Linux actually can be a very good platform for running your server, as long as you do it well and you take some things into consideration. So in this video, I'm gonna give you guys my opinions on that but I'm also going to show you how to set up Tiny Tiny RSS, which is a really awesome feed reader that you can install. So you basically have a way to go online from anywhere and get caught up on your favorite sites and news. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here we are on the Tiny Tiny RSS webpage. I'm not gonna go ahead and read the entire thing to you, but if you go to tt-rss.org, you can go and see all of the features that it includes. And even if you don't want to install it on Arch Linux, you can install it on whatever distribution you want. It doesn't matter, but you'll get some documentation here. So you might wanna check out this site just to get some additional information, but I'll be walking you through how to set this up. But here in this other tab on my browser, I have my dashboard for Linode. Linode is a sponsor, but they're a sponsor because I love their company and they're actually what powers my infrastructure. And this is where we're going to go to set up our very own Arch Linux based RSS feed reader. Now you can of course install tiny, tiny RSS on pretty much any Linux server. But one of the benefits that I love about Linode, in addition to everything else I like about them, is the fact that they actually offer Arch Linux. So if I go ahead and create, I click the Create button here and create a Linode, you have all of these options here for distributions, and you can see here that Arch Linux is an option, which is not very common. A lot of providers don't offer this, and I'm glad that Linode does offer this because not only is it one of my favorite distributions, it's just great to be able to have an Arch Linux distribution I could basically spin up anytime I need one, especially if I need to test out some commands or something in Arch. This gets me up and running quite quickly. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through creating this. Now obviously Linode isn't free. Any cloud provider is gonna have some kind of charge, but they, the cost is very small and you can get a $20 credit if you click on the link below in the show notes or even go to the URL that's on the screen right now, you can get a $20 credit, which will get you going for a while. So um, I definitely recommend you do that so that way you don't pay out of pocket as you're testing it out. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Arch. Then I'm gonna scroll down. And next you choose your region. So here in North America, I have these options. So there's Toronto, which is actually a newer one. And then we have several in the US. I'm gonna choose the one in New Jersey because that's closer to me. So you could just choose whichever one is closer to you. And if you're not in North America, of course, they have other options here. And uh, just go ahead and click through those so you can see them. So in my case, I'll just choose New Jersey. Scrolling down, we have options for the plan. So here is where you choose how fast or how much resources you get in your server. I mean, you could go up to, I mean, right here we have 192 gigabytes. For example, if I go to a high memory plan, you know, we have 300 gigabytes of RAM. Now, obviously you don't need anything crazy like that. Highly don't recommend that for this case. It'd be overkill, so don't do that. But you can go over here to the nanode category and for $5 a month, you can get one CPU with 25 gigabytes of storage and one gig of RAM, which, and that's the cheapest one, but that is more than enough to run a news server. So that's the one that I recommend that you go with. Now it says $5 a month here. Now you look on the right, it says seven. That's because backups are enabled. My account, I have it turned on to automatically enable backups. And that's not a bad idea, especially with Arch Linux. It is a rolling distribution. So if you're running it as a server, Backups might be a good idea because if you accidentally break something, well, you have a way of restoring that. So I do recommend that, but even if you don't do the $2 a month backup plan, you could just create a manual backup once you get it finished, and then you just at least have that restore point if you ever need it. Now for the label, I'm just gonna call it TT-RSS. 
So that's my clever name for it. So that's basically the name of your server. You can add tags, but I'm not gonna go ahead and do that right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and type a root password here. It's gonna be weak, but this is just a demonstration. I'm gonna be deleting this Linode after I'm done recording. And then down here, you can see that I have the backups option checked. Again, that is just something on my dashboard that I set up. And next, I'll click Create. And here we see the progress of the creation of the Linode. So basically, we're just waiting for this to complete. And already, we see what IP address it's going to get. So I'll just go ahead and click on this button right here to copy it to the clipboard. This is the IP address that I will use to SSH into the server to configure it. So while that's installing and setting up, there's a couple points that I want to uh, make sure that I mentioned about running Arch Linux as a server. Now, obviously, it does give you more responsibility because it's a rolling distribution, so you have to make some choices as far as what you update. Generally speaking, you shouldn't actually run into a problem. I know that a rolling distribution as a server scares people, right? But it doesn't have to because as long as you keep it simple, which is the Arch you know, mentality anyway, you shouldn't run into any issues. And what do I mean by keep it simple? Now, what I mean is if you're running Arch Linux as a server, you really should only run one thing on that server. You shouldn't set up an Arch Linux server and then have it be your file server, your web server, your database server, all these things all in one, because then if any one thing breaks, it could break other things. Now, that's not a mentality specific to Arch. I feel that way about everything. If you're running Debian, which is one of the most stable distributions you can run on a server, I still recommend that you only serve one thing per server. And I think that's very important because you don't want multiple things running. I've seen situations in my career where one app that's being served on a server just saturates RAM because it has a problem and it causes every single service on that service to also fail as well. Now I've also mentioned that backups are important. So at the very least, back up the server when you first set up Tiny Tiny RSS and you get it running, you could back up your news feed. So you don't have to worry too much about losing that if you restore it but at least have that one backup. Having a monthly backup plan, it, it helps, but it's up to you if you wanna pay the extra $2. I do recommend that. Uh, I think that Tiny Tiny RSS is great and it's actually worth the money because I use it like a lot. It is one of the um, most prominent things in my toolbox. I'm checking that thing every single day. It's actually how I keep in touch with what's going on in the news and Linux and open source. But running it in Arch Linux, you just wanna be a little cautious that you don't overdo it. And as long as you just run one thing, you run it well. But then you're wondering probably, well, what's the benefit? Why would I wanna run Arch Linux as my server? Why not Debian? You just mentioned a stable, right? But the thing about Arch is that the fact that it's rolling means that you can install your server and get it set up and then keep running that one server forever. You just keep updating, and as long as you update, you pretty much have nothing to worry about. So you basically don't run into a situation where there's a new version of the distribution and now you have to upgrade and you have to worry about what's going to break and then fix things. You just keep rolling with Arch, and I think that the long-term um, management is actually going to be easier than with Debian because with Debian every 18 months to two years you have a new release with Ubuntu it's every six months if you're on non LTS you know if you're on LTS it's every two years so at least with Arch Linux you don't have to worry about that upgrade and then moving everything over so you know that is a major benefit of Arch Linux as well and here we could see that the new tiny tiny RSS instance has booted Again, I have the IP address right here. So we're gonna to need to connect to this with an SSH client. So regardless of which operating system you use, there's a way to use SSH. Um, you know, Windows has the uh, services for Linux that you can install. For example, Mac OS has a built-in terminal. If you're already running Linux, well, you already have a terminal, so you may as well use it. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and open the terminal. So here I am on my Linux Mint machine. I'm doing some tutorials on Linux Mint if you're wondering why I'm running this when I just put out a video saying that I run Pop! OS primarily. Either way, I have uh, my terminal here, so what I'm gonna do is SSH into the Linode that I just created. So I'll do SSH, and I'm gonna use root, at, and then I'm going to paste in the IP address. Control, Shift, V in Linux will paste the IP. 
but then if you're using a different operating system, obviously you'll be able to paste as well. But that's the IP address I was given in the cloud manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect. Let's see if this works. I'll say yes, and put in the password. Clear the screen. So we are connected to our new Arch Linux server. Now, the first thing we want to do is update the packages to make sure that we're completely up to date. So what I'm gonna do is pacman dash capital S Y U, just like that, enter. See if there's any updates, and there's a few, so I'll go ahead and install them. We do have a new kernel, so we have to reboot the machine in order to take advantage of that. I'll just press enter to accept the default, and it'll download that and get those installed. All right. So now that the updates are done, I probably should reboot because one of the updates was the kernel itself. So I'm just gonna type reboot and press enter. And of course that dropped me back to my local shell. So it takes a couple of minutes before the instance is um, accessible again. So give it a few minutes and then basically you, do, you could just press the up arrow to recall your SSH command and uh, reconnect. Let's see if our server is online. I'll just do ping and then I'll paste the IP address from earlier. And then when this starts responding, then I'm close to being able to connect to it. All right, so the server is now pinging. Let's see if it's available for SSH. Just recall the SSH command and try to get into it. And there it is. All right, so we are back on our Arch Linux machine. It just recently rebooted, uptime is zero minutes. So sometimes you gotta give that a couple of minutes and then it comes back online. So now that we're up and running, we can continue. So first we need to install MariaDB because we have to use a database with TinyTinyRSS. Now I know I mentioned a few minutes ago that a server should only serve one thing. That's still true, we're only serving TinyTinyRSS. Having a backend database is you know, pretty much expected, but this database that we're going to be setting up will not be externally accessible. So it will not be a single point of failure for anything else. I'll go ahead and install MariaDB, Pacman dash capital S, MariaDB. And I'll just press enter. Should happen pretty quickly. There we go, control L to clear the screen. And we have MariaDB installed. Now, if you're very efficient in Linux already, you're probably thinking, okay, well, I need to start MariaDB and enable it, but don't do that quite yet. It's important that we configure a couple of things first before we enable that. So don't do that yet. We'll start the database service in just a moment. So now what we need to do is set up the default table. So I'm gonna paste in this command right here. Go ahead and pause the screen if you need to jot this down. I will have a wiki article link in the show notes below if you need the command so that you can copy and paste it. But effectively, we're setting up the data directory and the default user. And we have to do this first before we start MariaDB. So I'll press enter. And we'll install the system tables and there we go. All right, so that's done. So now we can actually enable and start the service. So I'm gonna do system CTL start MariaDB. And I'll change start to status see how it's doing and it is active and running but it's disabled so if this server does reboot then MariaDB will not come online automatically so we need to fix that and that's pretty easy to do by just changing the action to enable and now when we check the status we could see that it is enabled so when we restart the server MariaDB will come back so next we need to secure our installation so we're going to do MySQL even though it's MariaDB, it's still MySQL. So MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. And it's asking me to enter the current password for root. So there is no root password for MariaDB yet because we have yet to set one. We do have obviously the root password for the system, but that's not what it's asking for. It keeps a separate password for root. So since there isn't a password yet, I'll just press enter. And now it's asking me if I do want to set a root password and you absolutely should do this. The default is yes, because that's the capital that you see right here. So I'll just press enter. And it's asking me for a new password. I recommend you create a long password. 
I have had issues with special characters in my SQL passwords, so I just use really long random strings for passwords, and I recommend you do at least that. But again, this is just a demo, so I'm just gonna do something simple. Re-enter it. All right, so by default, it includes an anonymous user. Um, we don't want that. Um, pressing enter here will remove anonymous users. That's a good idea. Do you want to disallow root login remotely? Absolutely you want to disallow this because you absolutely do not want to allow root to log in from another machine. That's a huge security risk. So I'll press enter to disable that. And do you want to remove the test database? Yes, I do. Enter again. And now that it's done that, it needs to reload the privilege tables to basically make sure everything that we've done takes effect. And there's no reason not to do that. So I'll accept the default and press enter. And that's it. So MariaDB is set up. So now what we need to do is actually access the MariaDB shell so that we can create the database and the grant that's gonna be required for Tiny Tiny RSS. So let's go ahead and connect to MariaDB so that we can configure it. So what I'm gonna do is type MySQL, even though it's MariaDB, some of the commands are still MySQL. And I'm gonna do dash U root, that's the only user that we actually have right now, and space dash P, and then I can actually type the password here, but we shouldn't do that because if you do type the password here, then that's actually gonna make it recorded in the bash history. But if you don't include the password, but you do use dash P, it'll ask you for the root password. So that's better, so let's do that. Now it's asking for the password. So I'll put in the root password that I created earlier. And we are in the MariaDB shell. You can see that because we have a different prompt here. So we need to create a database for tiny, tiny RSS to use. So we'll do create database TTRSS, clever, I know semicolon to end the statement. I forget that constantly, but I'm gonna remember this time. And press enter. Now if we do show databases. In addition to the, the system tables, we can see that we have our tiny, tiny RSS uh, database right there. And then control L clears the screen in MariaDB just like it does in our normal prompt. For the next command, I'll go ahead and paste that in. And it's wrapping here, but basically what you're seeing is that we are going to create a user and a grant at the exact same time. I'm not gonna to spend too much time explaining that because it's not a database tutorial, but um, really quickly what we're doing is we are granting all privileges on our database. We called it TTRSS, so anything inside there. And who we're granting it to is a user, TTRSS. But we haven't created that user yet. But with this command here, we're actually creating the user and the grant at the same time by setting up a password. And here I have a random string. It's not that long, I wanted to keep it simple, but you know, I would say use something longer. Again, I've had trouble with special characters sometimes in my SQL databases. So I would just do a very long password here. But we're gonna need to remember that password because we're gonna need it shortly. So I'll press enter. And it says query, okay, so we're good there. And now what we need to do is flush privileges, semicolon. And normally SQL statements are in all caps. I have a habit of typing things in lowercase. It doesn't matter. Typing SQL statements in caps is more of a um, syntax preference, but it still works in lowercase. Anyway, we are all set with the database side of things. We did actually set up our database. So control D will drop us back to our normal console here. So I'll clear the screen. So now we can actually install Tiny Tiny RSS. I have a whole tutorial of Arch Linux, so if you need an introduction to that, I have a whole video series, so I'm not gonna go in too detail about package management, but really quickly, we can just, just do capital S, and then another S, and then we can search for something. So it should be TT-RSS, let's see if I'm right. And I am. So that's the package tt-rss that comes from the community repository. So that's how you search for packages, a dash capital S, lowercase s. If you actually want to go ahead and install the package, you just take the lowercase s away. So we want to install tt-rss. We can see here that PHP is coming along for the ride as a requirement or a prerequisite. That is required though. So if this ever changes and you don't see this, 
in the list of packages that will be installed. You definitely want to install PHP as well, but I'm going to go ahead and press enter because the requirement is here. And there we go. So tiny, tiny RSS is now installed. So now what we need to do is edit the PHP configuration file. So we can use the nano text editor. You could use whatever text editor you want. And the file we need to edit is slash Etsy PHP, then php.ini, enter. And now we're here in our text editor. So now what we need to do is find the extensions section. And I find the easiest way to do that is do control W, which is kind of like search. And we're gonna search for extension equals, which should take us very close to the section we need to be in. This is a very big file. So if I press enter, we can see that it brings us right to the dynamic extensions section. You could scroll down and find this, but I find it's easier to do it this way. And if you scroll down, you'll see a list of extensions. If there's a semicolon in front, it's commented out. We can see this one is not commented out. This is curl. We actually do need this, so that's a good thing. But if you do see there's a semicolon in front of yours for some reason, you wanna make sure that there isn't because we need that extension enabled. And then another one here is icon V. So I will remove the semicolon from that one. And next we need to see if we have MySQL, which we do. So we need this one right here, MySQL I. We also need this one too, PDO underscore MySQL. So I'll remove the semicolon from that as well. And we also need SOAP. So let's see if that's on the list and it is. So we will remove the semicolon from that. And then now that we've made those changes, and again, that will be in the wiki page for this video. I'll do control O to save it, enter, then control X to exit out of the text editor. So next what I'm gonna to need to do is create a directory. This directory may exist, but um, it didn't in my case and probably won't for you unless you have installed something else that would have created it. So we're gonna do MKDIR. Then the directory we want, we want to create is this one. Etsy pacman.d hooks, so I'll press enter, and then clear the screen. And now we need to create our hooks file. So we're gonna do nano, and this is the file that we want to edit. So basically what we're doing is we're creating a hook for the tiny, tiny RSS package that will fire if the package ever gets updated. Now that's important because if the update of a new version of this program basically requires database changes, then it's going to require us to do some manual database updates. So I will press enter. And now we're in nano. And what I'm gonna do is paste in what we actually want to include here. And I know that this is basically a lot of text here. So what I would recommend is you pause the video and copy it from the wiki article directly. This is a lot to type by hand. I don't recommend typing something by hand when you have this much to type. The margin of user error is probably a lot higher. And now that we have that, I'll do Control O to save, and then Control X to exit out. Another optional thing that we can do is enable the update daemon. So I'm gonna do system CTL, enable, TT, RSS, I'm not gonna start it yet because you know we have some more configuration to do. So now what we're gonna do is set up a web server. This is required, otherwise we won't be able to access Tiny Tiny RSS. So I'm going to show you how to install Apache. So what we're gonna do is do pacman dash capital S. We're gonna install Apache itself, but we also need Apache to handle PHP for us as well. So we'll do PHP dash Apache. So we'll install those two packages. Press enter, and that was quick, so everything should be installed for Apache. So next, we wanna make sure Apache starts when we start our server, so we're gonna do system CTL enable HTTPD. We're not gonna start Apache yet because we need to configure it first, but we do wanna make sure that it's enabled and we've done that. So now we need to tell Apache where to find the tiny, tiny RSS files. The quickest way to do that is to just create a symbolic link. So I pasted the command there. So effectively, we're just creating a symbolic link there. Apache is gonna be looking for this in the uh, SRV HTTP TTRSS directory as you see there at the end. So I'll press enter and the symbolic link is created, simple as that. But we also need to make sure that Apache has access to read the files for tiny, tiny RSS. So to do that, We'll run chown-r because we do want to be recursive. 
and we want to change the owner to HTTP and the user to HTTP as well. And then the directory we want to change permissions on is this one. Slash user share web apps TT RSS. So go ahead and pause the screen if you need to. And I'll press enter. And that's pretty simple. We just changed permissions. So to make sure we've done that properly, we could just do ls l user share web apps TT RSS. We should see everything here is user HTTP and group HTTP as well. So before we start Apache, we do need to do some additional configuration here. So what I'm going to do is edit a file, just paste it in there. And the file that we're going to edit is slash Etsy slash HTTPD slash CONF slash HTTPD dot CONF. This is the default configuration file for Apache. Press enter. We now have it open in the text editor. So we can do control W to search and let's search for load module capital L and M. And we're going to go down here to this line right here, which is actually the first load module that's not commented, but we are going to comment that out. We don't want that line in particular. So I put a hash symbol there in front of that one. And then we're going to uncomment the one directly underneath that. Okay. And with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and scroll down a bit here. More than a bit actually. So then at the end of the load module list or thereabout, we're going to paste in a couple additional lines here. And I added these two right here, this load module PHP 7 line and the add handler PHP 7 line. And I added those to the file. Go ahead and pause the screen if you need to. And let's just save the work that we've done so far, but we don't need to exit the file just yet. Next, we're going to find the include section. And then here it is. We see some include lines, so we're just going to go to the end, find where those stop, and it's about here. And then we're going to paste in another line right here. And what this is going to do is make sure that this config file for PHP is included as well. So now we can save the file and exit out. We should be able to start up Apache, so system CTL start httpd and enter. Let's check the status. We see Apache is running. Q for exit out of that and then clear the screen again. I'm going to switch over here to my web browser and I'm here at just a blank page. So what I'm going to do is paste in the IP address of the actual Linode itself. Go ahead and paste that up there and then I'm going to do slash tt RSS slash install and enter. In our case, it's telling us the config.php file already exists. So what we need to do is get rid of that file. So back here at the terminal, we're going to change directory to user share web apps TT RSS. If we list storage, do we see a config.php? And we definitely do. So let's go ahead and move that. Just change the name basically so that it can't find it. And then we'll switch back over here to the web browser and refresh. And here we get an option to set up our database. So we decided to go with MySQL, actually MariaDB, but it's um, compatible with MySQL. So we will choose that. And then what I'm going to do is paste in the information here for the various fields. So the username is TTRSS. And if you used a different username, make sure you put yours here. And I'll paste in the password that we put in the grant for the database. Database name is also TTRSS. Host name, we shouldn't need that because we're using the local server and we'll use the default port. So we won't fill out those two fields right there. And it's going to have us set the URL, which right now it's set to the IP address. Now, if you have a domain name, you can feel free to use that and set the A record and then you would just change that here as well. And then what you do is you click test configuration to see if it's working. So I'll do that. So we see here that the configuration check did succeed and it's complaining that we don't have internationalization support in PHP. So if you needed to use internationalized domain names, that's something you could enable. I'm not going to go over that. 
The database check was successful, so now what we need to do is initialize the database, so I'll click on that. And then if I scroll down here, you can see that it gave us a config.php that it generated for us. So you can save the file and then upload it to the server. What I'm actually gonna do is just copy the entire file here and copy that. So I'm still in the tt-rss directory. If I do pwd, you can see where I'm at here. And what I need to do is create that file. If you remember, we moved it to config.php.bak. So I'm gonna create a new one. And then I'm just gonna paste in the information here. And we should be good to go. So control O to save it and control X to exit out. All right, guys, so moment of truth. Is it going to work? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the IP address here of the Linode, which has changed because I did delete the original and recreated it just to make sure everything in this tutorial is going to work. But anyway, is this going to get us to tiny, tiny RSS? Let's find out. I'll just append the little path here, tt-rss, and press enter. And we do have a login page. As you can see, it was successful. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in now. And since we didn't actually configure the password yet, the default username is going to be admin and password is going to be password. So I'll log in. And of course it's going to warn us that the password is the default, which we really should change this especially considering that this is publicly available. So I'll go ahead and open the preferences here. And I'll click on users. And we can see the administrator user right here. This is the default. Check the box right there. I'll click edit. And I can go ahead and give the admin user a different password. So I'll go ahead and put that in here. And I'll save it. And I'm going to go ahead and exit preferences. It's telling me I'm not authorized because I just changed the password, but that was expected. So I'll exit the preferences and I'll put in the username again and then the password I just changed it to and let's see if this works. And sure enough, it did. And I didn't get the message about the password being default because we did in fact change that. So now I have an Arch Linux based RSS feed reader right here, powered by Tiny Tiny RSS, which is awesome. So there you go. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Enjoy your new Tiny Tiny RSS server running on good old Arch. So um, I'll have more tutorials coming, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.